Hello everybody, it's Miss Hendy here and it's Friday, woohoo! And it's the last day of this half term. I bet you're all looking forward to having a lovely break over um, the next week. Um, I want to say that all the teachers and myself are incredibly proud of you and how hard you have worked this half term. It's very tricky learning in a completely different environment um, to school, uh, even though it's your home, it's not where you're used to learning and we're all really proud of you, so well done. Um, as per usual, we're going to start the lesson with a poem. Um, so this one is called A Tree by James Carter. A tree is not like you and me. It walks around quite patiently, catching kites and dropping leaves, reaching out to touch the breeze. A tree all day will stand and stare, clothed in summer, winter, bare. It has no shame or modesty. Perhaps its generosity is the greatest in the world. It gives a home to every bird, every squirrel, feed them too. To every dog, it is a loo. And after dark, what does it do? Catch a falling star or two, shimmy in the old moonlight, or maybe have a conquer fight. A tree can give an awful lot, the wood to make a baby's cot. Pencils, paper, stair tables, chairs, lolly sticks, as well as stairs. Without a tree, we could not live. A tree, it seems, just loves to give. But us, we chop, we take, we burn. That's what we do in return. So that's a poem by James Carter. And what I really like about James Carter's poetry, um, I love the words, but I also like um, that he writes the poems in a way so it shapes the tree, so it's in the shape of the tree. And maybe later when we talk about publishing, you might choose that as an op option to publish your poem. So today, no date or time to win your book, not needed because you are either finishing your poem from yesterday, editing it, and then publishing it. So what I'm looking for, um, similes and include adjectives of bronze, um, both of those and include adverbs and a minimum of eight lines for silver and then gold to do all of that and include expanded noun phrases and alliteration. And yesterday you wrote your own poem, um, today you're going to finish it if you haven't already um, before you edit it and publish it. So first of all, if you haven't finished your poem, I'd like you to press pause now and um, with the toolkit on screen and you can finish your poem. And when we're ready to move on, um, we are going to be um, using our imagination because we're going to be imagining what that animal is like and um, being reflective. Now, reflectiveness is a really is one of our main branches and it's such an important skill in learning. Um, I always say to my children, um, when J.K. Rowling writes her books, Harry Potter, she never wrote that perfectly the first time. That didn't happen. She would um, constantly be reflecting on the story, thinking about how she can improve it, how can she change it, how can she make it better. It never came perfect as a first draft. And that's why it's really important as a skill to learn as a writer, um, to be reflective. So that's why we are learning to do that. So here's my poem. Um, I've made a couple of little changes so I can show you how I can edit it. And here's my toolkit that I've ticked off already because I had included a simile, adjectives, adverbs, eight lines and, um, and alliteration. Haven't included expanded noun phrase, so I'll probably aim to do that today. So we have, I am a lion. I can move quickly like lightning. I have terrifying teeth that are as sharp as knives. I am dangerous like a shark. I can roar violently like thunder. I am brave like a soldier. I have eager eyes like an eagle. I have fur as golden as the sun. I am a lion. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little look at my vocabulary in there and my spelling. So I'm going to have a little read for it through. Um, I have terrifying teeth that are as sharp as knives. Now I'm going to change knives. I'm going to make the screen um, smaller quickly um, just so then I can change the colour to purple to show that I'm editing. But you can choose any colour that you like if you don't have a purple pen at home. I have terrifying teeth that are sharp as daggers I'm going to have. Um, And then I'm going to check my next line. I am dangerous. Now, I wasn't sure about the spelling of dangerous. Um, 
so I check, I'm going to check in the dictionary and the way I can do that is I can use the first um, few letters um, that I'm sure of and use those to help me find the word in the dictionary. And then I realise that it's spelled incorrectly, so I'm going to edit my spelling in purple pen. And that's okay if you just pop a line through it and edit it. I can roar violently like thunder. I'm brave like a soldier. Mm, brave. Um, I thought after actually, like I'm not sure how brave my lion is because I've been trying to make them sound quite like a fierce lion. So I'm actually going to say rather than brave, I'm going to say I'm mighty like a soldier. I have eager eyes like an eagle. I have fair as golden. Now I was unsure about spelling golden, so I'm going to check that one in the dictionary. And it's E-N at the end of golden, not U-N. So that's fine. I can check my spelling and correct it. Okay, so I've checked my spellings. I've checked um, my um, vocabulary to see if I would like to change anything. Um, here, I haven't included an expanded noun phrase, so I would like to do that. Um, so I need to find a noun phrase first, so like terrifying teeth. So I might say large terrifying teeth that are as sharp as daggers and we'll put that in purple because that's some of my editing um what else can i say um i think i'm going to leave it at that i'm happy with that i would like you to press pause have a go at editing your poem um once you are happy with it um i would like you to press play again and i'm going to go through some ways that you can publish your poem Okay, so your next job to do is to publish your poem. Now, publishing is when we're going to write our work up in neat because we are finished with it. And I'm going to give you some options of what you can do. So first option is you can type it up in Word or PowerPoint, so doing it on your devices at home. Um, or um, a really quite interesting way to do it is if you have any greaseproof paper at home or any tracing paper, you can write your poem on that and then get an A4 piece of paper and do your image um, of your animal um, on the A4 piece of paper. And then you can stick your grease proof paper or tracing paper for your poem on, on top like a flap of your picture. So then you can see past your picture through the poem and you can still lift it up to see your picture. Um, or you can just draw an image and lightly in pencil um, on a piece of paper and you can write over it in pen um, your poem on top of it. You could use James Carter's idea of doing your poem in the shape of your animal um, or you can just write it up neatly in pen with a board of paper and draw your animal and I'll, um, there'll be some board of paper available for you in the files um, on Teams. Um, but you can do it any way you like. So if there's an idea that actually you'd like to publish it in a different way um, then we'll be more than happy to see it. Um, so that's it for today. Um, just one final thing um, to share with you. We have, words are, in my not so humble opinion, our most inexhaustible source of magic. And that was said by um, Albus Dumbledore um, in the Harry Potter books, so J.K. Rowling. And essentially what it's saying is that words create magic in your mind, in your imagination. And that word inexhaustible means that you can never run out of it. It's always going to be there. It's like a source of magic that we can use as much as we like from a story writing, poem writing, anything like that. So, um, yeah, I like that quote and I thought I'd share it with you. Um, I hope you've had a good day and enjoyed the lesson. Take care. Bye bye.